Helping Seniors of Brevard, the show for and about seniors, heard every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 o'clock. And let's get things going as we introduce to you one of our favorite people, the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard, and the host of the show, by the way. I always like to say it's a daily double, and here is Carrie Fink. Hi, Carrie. Hey, John Harper, and thank you for the very kind introduction. It's always fun to get together on the radio Wednesday lunchtimes. It's the Helping Seniors radio show, and kind of honoring our president and founder. Well, I got a, I got a news, a breaking news announcement, if you haven't heard this. By the way, uh, Joe Steckler is officially our president emeritus. We had a board meeting on uh, the end of August, and Joe is, uh, Joe is still involved 100%. He's on the board, but he said, you know, Carrie, Jennifer, the entire board team, uh, our guest is actually on the board of Helping Seniors. Her name is uh, Ruth Rhodes, one of only two board certified elder law attorneys in Brevard County. Hey, Ruth, how are you? Hey, Carrie, I'm doing wonderful. How are you this sunny day? I'm good. So to finish, what I always say is I say, you know, we always want to honor our president and founder, Joe Steckler, because of... uh, uh, his his uh, faith and 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 uh, passion for all things senior, you know, with the Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation, setting all that up, getting that rolling. They call him Joe's Clubs this day, and then now helping seniors going into something like 14 years. But Joe said it's time to pass the baton, and so at the board meeting, we are so excited to announce somebody who's been on the board like almost since Joe started this. Jennifer Barton with Seniors Helping Seniors is now officially president of uh, the Helping Seniors Organization. You're going to read more about that when you get your next edition of the Senior Scene magazine. But uh, today, every time we get together around the radio, Ruth, we love to try to share what Joe has always taught us about, is trying to get everybody to put together an aging plan. And at first, when I met Joe all those years ago, I thought, I'm not quite sure I follow. I was invited to speak at the um, Palm Bay Rotary Club last night and I really appreciate the opportunity to share about helping seniors and I was explaining that I'd figured out over time that aging plan is a lot like a hurricane plan it doesn't mean you want a problem you just want to know how you're going to plan for the problem and Ruth that is what you kind of like shout from the rooftops you do all these seminars you do all these training things you write articles you help people understand really why it's in their best interest and maybe just as importantly why it could be so dangerous to not plan for your for your aging and think about those things right yeah absolutely carrie um i do shout from the rooftops about this because if it's not a matter of if it it is a matter of when a lot of times um in our lives uh because we will likely face incapacity at some point and we need to make sure we have a plan for that Um, whether that's uh, because we're having surgery and we need someone to be able to pay our bills and run errands for us or if we actually do lose our mental capacity um, we're going to need someone to be able to take care of business for us and we don't want to become a ward of the state through a guardianship so planning is key you know, one of the things that we were talking about uh, at at this Rotary Club meeting, and they, they it was really interesting because it was a, a great mix. Yeah, I just call it a, a beautiful tapestry of diversity of everybody that makes up our community. Again, this was the Palm Bay Rotary Club. They meet over at the Broken Barrel Tavern here in Palm Bay. That's easy for me to say. But they wanted, they were willing to have me come in and share a little bit about the work of helping seniors. I said, you know. One of the things that I've heard Joe talk about over and over is you got to put this stuff together because I said, you know, when you're a kid, what do they say to you when you're in school? What's your plan? What do you want to be when you grow up? Then when you're a younger person, they say, okay, what's your plan? Are you going to be married? Are you going to have kids? What, you know, what's your job going to be? What's your career? And then when you get older, they say, well, now you got to you got to do retirement planning. So how how are you setting up your savings? How are you doing this? What's your are you going to buy a house? What are all these things you can do? And then, but retirement planning is not the same as aging plan, is it, Ruth? Oh, no. No, it's not. Retirement planning, to me, is mostly about finances, making sure you have enough money going right. into retirement, right? Um, an aging plan is, is more about what happens to me if I need help at some point. And how am I going to make sure I have that help available to me? 
And that's something we do every day um, at Rhodes Law. We help people figure out if they're going to lose capacity. It, you know, we don't want you to, obviously. But if it happens, how are we going to take care of you? How are we going to take care of your family? You know, this is exactly what we were speaking about last night because I said, you know, there's a quote, and I always like, I have to give credit where credit is due. This came from Troy Denault, who uh, runs a group called Sotir LLC that helps their their job is they try to help find, I guess you would say, a place for mom or dad and, and, and in that. And this, this line that he said years ago always stuck with me. He said, Carrie, nobody wakes up on a random Saturday morning and they're sitting there drinking coffee and go, you know, let's go check out some assisted livings today and see <laughs> what they look like. Said, it never no. happens. It only no. <laughs> happens when mom's in the hospital, not safe to come home. Now everything has to get uprooted. And so the question is, what an awful time to be trying to do this because you're under a point of maximum, probably emotional stress, just financial stress. Everything is shifting under you and you don't have any experience in trying to sort this stuff out. And now you have to sort this stuff out because there is a definite deadline. And, and, and I know you're good. Your, your law office is excellent at helping people in crisis. But isn't it a whole lot easier when somebody comes and says, I want to try to get all my ducks in a row now? <laughs> yeah, it definitely is easier um, when someone thinks ahead like that. And I think as a society, we're, we're not doing a good job of preparing for what could happen as we age. I know there, I think Sweden does a much better yeah. job than we do. Um, and it, it is important to think about as we age, how are we going to take care of ourselves? Who's going to help us if we need help? And, and what does that look like? Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, part of the process of what we do at our firm is we, we talk to the individual and we try to f figure out, you know, what they want and then prepare legal documents to help carry out what they want in the event that they lose capacity because the last thing you want to, at least for me, is to not have those documents and then need to involve the courts through a guardianship and now suddenly you have um, the government very much involved in your life and you are called a ward of the state um, and that is not something I would want for myself or my loved ones. And so planning, having that durable power of attorney, that's key. Having a designation of health care surrogate, another very key document for avoiding guardianship. And, you know, that's part of the planning process that we go through. You know, that, that was, again, I keep thinking back what we were talking to uh, about this last night. And I said, you know, that's the point, right? There is a plan. If you don't have a plan, the government has a plan. It just may oh, not yeah. be the plan that you had in mind. And, and you know, I think the, the – uh, it was interesting because after the talk, several people, a lot of people came up and started asking questions. In fact, a guy was there from the uh, Rockledge Rotary Club visiting, and he said, would you come and share this same information? I said, I'm happy to anytime, anywhere. But he said, he said, Carrie, I think probably six out of ten people in this room don't have a plan. You know, and, and I, I was going to ask you, what's your – What's your, you know, you kind of see it from all sides when people walk in. What, is, is, is that right? I think that might be higher than I think. He was even yeah, thinking. Yeah, I, wow. I think so. A lot of people just, we don't want to think about it. Like, that's right. the way we're built. We're built to have eternity in our soul, right? right? right. We're never going to die. This is never happening to us. It happens to other people, but right. Right. not <laughs> not to me, right? Um, so, I think, you know, it's not unusual for me to meet with someone who's in their 70s and this is the first time they sat down with an attorney to talk about what happens if. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's, this is the whole point, right? This is better late than never. So even if you didn't get started, you know, that, because that's one of the things we, we have adopted this uh, like little motto in our, our helping seniors world, because since we answer the County Senior Information Helpline, it's that free call at 321-473-7770. And last year, it was more than 5,400 calls handled on that hotline. Uh, and what we've learned is, boy, if you plan ahead, you can navigate things a whole lot. It doesn't mean you won't have a problem, but you can navigate all these things a whole lot better. And one of the things that we were talking about, again, is like, because I've heard this from anybody that I've ever talked to that has anything to do with elder law, is a family will come in, there's been some incident, mom's in the hospital, can't do stuff, 
now somebody's got to write a mortgage check or there's some other the power bill has to be paid or they're going to shut it off or just some, something and everything's kind of like up in the air and so I would assume your first question is good let me see your power of attorney and <laughs> they say a, a what a what and, oh, then, yeah. and then now now it's it, it, probably it means guardianship right which all of a sudden that's what I was trying to explain last night I'm not an expert like you but now something that might have been a few hundred dollars is tens of thousands of dollars and now the court has to approve everything is going on oh yeah oh yeah and guardianship yeah <laughs> it, it's probably ten thousand wow. dollars to get one established and and that's not necessarily a lot of fighting yeah. that could be a pretty smooth one wow. um and then it the bleeding of the money never stops because you're in the system now and mm-hmm. it's unlikely that you will get out of the system and guardianship generally will last the lifetime and so and then the law requires annual plans annual accountings those are all you know cost money i mean it gives court oversight which can be good but if you can avoid it it's it's best because the attorney fees even without fighting can be pretty astronomical with guardianship now my office helps people with guardianship but if I can help you avoid it, I want you to. You know, I smile because I think I think uh, there's an awful lot of lawyer jokes that go around. And yet, you know, as I talk to you, I think you really do so much good in the community. And here's what I mean by that. We'll turn on the TV. We'll see a commercial. And it says, oh, you can do your estate planning online. Just <laughs> click through here. And yeah. you do all this. And and then, you know, you're going to have peace of mind. And it's all, all going to be fine. And I keep thinking to myself, you don't even know the roadblock you're going to run into until the moment that that paper has to work. And if it doesn't work, it's not like you say, oh, I forgot to check that box. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. And yet you guys probably make more money from fixing poor decisions other people made trying to maybe come up with the documents. And then if they just come to you and sat down the first time and said, so for you, it must be a money-making business. And yet you still turn around the other way and you'd rather get people in the office early to get proper setup and planning. Absolutely. I do try to do the best I can for, for my clients and save them money whenever possible and try to have fair prices. But, and you're right. It, I do make more money off of people who don't plan properly yeah. because they oftentimes we went from something that could have been a relatively inexpensive situation um, to a very expensive situation with guardianship. Yeah. Estate planning is a far better uh, value and a whole lot less expensive. Well, and then, you know, it seems to me like there's categories of things that happen. Then there's the the sweet lady that you know from church, and she'll help you do your paperwork. And, you know, uh, and again, the problem is uh, you don't know if it was done right or wrong because you didn't have somebody who specializes in this. Maybe it's right, but maybe it's not. Or maybe it's close, but not close enough. Right. We see that a lot. Um, So in particular with that durable power of attorney, it has to be very specifically written. And so if, if a particular power is needed and it's not particularly written or it's not initialed, if it's a superpower or it's not been properly signed and witnessed and notarized. I mean, a number of things can go wrong. And the problem, like you mentioned, is oftentimes you don't realize or discover that there's a defect in the documents until it's time to use them. And then, so my question a lot of times is, okay, um, for a typical situation where a daughter or son comes in and says, I need um, to help my mom or dad go on Medicaid right. uh, because they've hurt themselves, they've done their rehab, they're out of rehab days, and now uh, we just got notice that they're going to have to start paying you know, $14,000 a month for the nursing home, uh, and we can't afford that. Right. And um, my first question is, great, do you have a durable power of attorney? And they either say yes or no, and hopefully they say yes. Right. But then the next thing I have to look at is, does this power of attorney give this person the authority to do the Medicaid planning for their mom and dad? And if it doesn't, then my next question is, does your mom or dad have capacity because we need to update this document now? 
And if their answer is yes, great, we can fix it. We'll even go to the nursing home right. bedside, do the signing. But if their answer is no, then we have to start thinking about alternatives and it may very quickly turn into a guardianship situation where we have to now file for guardianship, get them deemed incapacitated, appointed a guardian for them, and then go with our hat in our hands and beg the court to let us do the Medicaid planning. And it becomes a very expensive situation yeah. that could have been resolved with a good, durable power of attorney. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we're yeah. having a conversation with Ruth Rhodes, board-certified elder law attorney with Rhodes Law. And, you know, we've covered a couple of danger zones. People who think maybe, you know, we all think we're smart because we have the Internet, so we can search stuff. But I, <laughs> right. I, this was another thing I mentioned last night. I don't know about you, but it's happened to me many times. I'll start to Google something, and I can actually walk away a little bit more confused than I started with because there's like no filter, right? It's just whoever bought the biggest ad or, and then, and then and particularly, and I saw this with like legal stuff, you know, you'll ask a question, something that you think, well, I just want to get a general idea about this legally. And you have all these problems, you know, here's a, here's a nice comment, but it's from an attorney in the state of Washington, which may or may not have anything to do with Florida or, or it was some case law from 1974, which has probably been, you know, changed like 20 times since then. Right. Yeah. I mean, do it yourself. You know, it, it's like you need to be careful and it's buyer beware. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't recommend it's It's like the old saying when you see those commercials where people are doing crazy, dangerous things and they say, don't try this at, at home. home. Yeah, <laughs> I would say, don't try this at home. <laughs> Yeah, because because it's it's so it's so like cliff edge, right? It has to be right. It, it you know it's you know a lot of people are talking about secret service and stuff like that. You know those poor guys, they have to get it right a hundred percent of the time, mm-hmm. and it's kind of the same with your paperwork, right? I mean, if you don't get your paperwork right a hundred percent of the time, this could be the problem when there's no turning back. You know, absolutely. And we don't have a crystal ball, so that that makes it that makes it precarious. So. When you do your plan, you you do need to go for a well-rounded plan uh, to try and cover all the bases, which, you know, we we practice law, right? It's a practice, (laughs) right? So, uh, you know, every year... um, I get educated. I do my C, my continuing legal education classes. I try to hone in and get better and better and better at what I do yeah. uh, because I want to make sure that the clients are covered that right. for all contingencies, if possible. Well, as I said, we, so we've covered a couple of danger zones. We talked about the danger of trying to do this yourself. Uh, and then, and then the other challenges, you know, you pluck that, uh, business card off the church bulletin board or worse yet, just off of the grocery <laughs> store bulletin board. Somebody says, I can help you do this for a hundred dollars or something. And now you're like, Oh, that looked good. But if you don't have a chance, but I'm going to talk about a third danger area. And that's like so many people are moving into Florida and maybe say, listen, I'm careful with my paperwork. I had the best attorney when I lived up in New York state. I had the <laughs> best attorney when I lived in Chicago, but I want to be down here in the sunshine. And so they think they're all set, right. but they didn't have anybody who knows Florida law. Take a look at those documents and make sure that what might have been set up right for that state is still applicable here. Absolutely. And, you know, in The United States Constitution says what is done legally in one state should be recognized as legal Uh in another state. But the logistics of using an out-of-state durable power of attorney and bringing it to the bank and the bank sends it off to the legal department and their legal department, in the meantime, days are going by. Right. And and there's an emergency going on, right, because you got to get that bill paid or whatever the situation is. Um, And then the legal department may reject it because something wasn't initial the way Florida wants it done. Right. You know, because Florida is very particular. So I always recommend if you have moved in from out of state, you have documents from out of state, get them updated. If you're going to live in Florida, have Florida documents, get them updated. Yeah. And we got so many people, right? That snowbird. So they're, you know, okay, I have my place up in Michigan during right. the, the summer months. And then I like to come down here during the winter months, which seems like a great idea. Yeah. But I get, I, but I guess also one of the things is figuring out, you know, where you want your stuff. Like I, I'm not an expert at this like you are, but I also think sometimes there's benefits to being a Florida resident. It seems like we have a lot of protections on homesteads and things like that, that that maybe you don't always get in the other states, which is another reason you got to sit down with somebody who really knows all the ins and outs of how to put you in the best advantage on all this stuff. 
Absolutely. And I do have clients that are snowbirds and their main residence is a different state. Uh And how I reckon, how I recommend to them is your main state, wherever your main Uh state of your homestead is, have your complete set of documents done by a local attorney up there Uh and then have down here in Florida, when so that you're covered if anything happens right. while you're here, a Florida durable power of attorney, a Florida healthcare surrogate, mm-hmm. a Florida living will, and a Florida declaration of prenatal guardian. That way, if you have a health crisis or you get in an accident or something happens and you lose capacity, mm-hmm. you have Florida recognized documents that you can use right now, yeah. um, rather than trying to figure out if your out of state documents are going to work. Yeah, you know, and it's. Very cost effective to do it that way. And the reverse, I also recommend the reverse. So I actually do have clients that their main homestead is in Florida Mm -hmm. and they only go up north during the worst of the heat. You know what I'm talking about. So I will recommend, obviously, a Florida Mm -hmm. complete Mm -hmm. set. And then I'll tell them wherever they're vacationing for the summer months. if if they have a home up there, right. of course, to go ahead and get a set of local advanced directives so okay. that if they are have any issue, they'll be covered locally up there as well. We're gonna we're gonna have this conversation going well past the mid show break, but one other I wanna put the fourth danger zone in here before we get to the break. Because we, we talked about don't try this on your own with your own documents. We said don't, you know, pluck that bulletin that card off the bulletin board. Uh don't don't uh you know if you're if you're new to Florida or or you're part-time in Florida, make sure that what you've got is going to work for Florida. But the fourth area I want to talk about is you got to be careful because maybe you have a great real estate attorney. Maybe you have somebody <laughs> helped you with a family divorce situation or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, I can write your stuff up. But I have seen you guys have to straighten out stuff that another attorney did who isn't spe- – and again, I, I keep harping on this. You're one of only two attorneys in Brevard County that has taken not only – expertise in elder law but taking it to the what i would call the penultimate part of it and say i'm going to be board certified which means you do all this extra work to make sure that you're like 100 percent up on all of it yeah so you are correct i have seen some crazy documents drafted by family law attorneys um by criminal law attorneys actually oh, wow. <laughs> wow. um and um it's so the thing about estate planning a lot of other attorneys think it is so simple and easy because it appears like maybe it might be but we're involved in all sorts of things from on the other end right when we get these ugly documents and now we have to deal with them yeah and we see the consequences of that yeah and then I just get so upset sometimes (laughs) (laughs) because I see these documents I know the attorney they're great nice people they're trying to help their client yeah. you know oh, let me just draft this power of attorney for you and they're using documents that are 10 years old right. you know forms that are out of date and what the problem is with all of these four problems that you're you're pointing out is it's a false sense of security yeah and you don't know you're in trouble until you're there well, yeah. we're going to continue this conversation with board certified elder law attorney ruth rhodes of the rhodes law firm on the second half of the helping seniors lunch hour so please stick around you're going to learn a whole lot more Twelve thirty-three in the afternoon is our time here on 90.3 fm john harper here with you let's get back to more of helping seniors of brevard here's your host and the executive director of helping seniors of brevard carrie fink carrie Hey, thank you, John Harper. It's always great to be on the radio Wednesdays, lunchtime, 90.3 FM, WEJF. And if you're listening online at WEJF.net, thank you for tuning in. Also, if you're catching this as a podcast, we want to thank you for finding this on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Hey, Alexa, play me, Helping Seniors. It's all there. And and one of the reasons that we do this, we also put it out on our YouTube channel, Facebook. We put it out on our website, Helping Seniors at Brevard. Dot org. The reason we do all of that is because what we find out is when we get into a good conversation like we're having today with board-certified elder law attorney Ruth Rhodes of the law firm uh, Rhodes Law, 
is a lot of times people will maybe they they were in the car and they missed part of the show and they want to go back and get something from it or and we get this feedback a lot too somebody will hear a show and say oh my uncle fred could really benefit from what you guys are talking about today because he needs to do whatever we were talking about today and so the very fact that all this library of materials is available to you absolutely free of charge you just got to go find it like i said the website youtube facebook uh, any of the great uh, podcast outlets, you'll be able to find Helping Seniors Radio. And so there's a couple of things I was saying, Ruth, when we started the conversation uh, about today, and we're trying to help you get together your aging plan, which we euphemistically call getting your ducks in a row. There's two two corollaries we've added to that. The first is be wise like an owl and don't um, and don't try this on your own. Get somebody who's an expert to lead you through it because a lot of times you might be a rock we talked we talked about this uh just at a, at a talk yesterday at golden providers you know you could be a rocket scientist you could literally be a rocket scientist working for <laughs> nasa or somebody here on the space coast and you're, you're probably the most brilliant person in the room but if you don't have that situational awareness and expertise in the lane that you're needing to travel in you you could still horribly mess up in fact sometimes a, what is it they say a little knowledge could be a dangerous thing right absolutely yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so getting the right help at the right time i was thinking like when we were talking about just before the break we were talking about some common mistakes people make there was four of them we mentioned is like number one trying it on your own number two is like plucking you know somebody says well i'm not really an attorney but i do this all the time let me help you out <laughs> that's a problem the third one is if you are actually in a situation where you are talking to somebody uh that you had a great lawyer up north or out west or wherever you're coming from and now you're in florida but you need to make sure whatever you did is appropriate for florida and then the fourth area we talked about was maybe you have a buddy who's a lawyer and like we were joking like you even had <laughs> criminal defense lawyers draw stuff up and then you have to sort it out when it's not what was actually needed to be done and in fact on that particular one i said you know this is a problem we do like this is so obvious we would never do this you, you know if the doctor said i need you to see a heart specialist well you're not going to go to a podiatrist right i mean you're, right. you're going to go find i want the best heart heart doctor there is period and you're going to ask everybody who that is and you're going to seek that one out that's what we need to do with elder law because it's 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 unique spe and we talked about this also going into the break i said i don't know how many elder law attorneys exist in central florida i would assume there's a lot and i'm talking about people who hang out the shingle and say i'm an elder law attorney this is what i'm going to do but how many actually go through the extra training and everything that's required to become board certified and there's only two here in brevard county you're one of them yep that's true yeah. there's a lot of attorneys out there that that practice elder law that are not board certified in elder law for yeah sure. and and i don't know about you but when i run into something I'm always looking for who's the person that can best help me navigate this. You know, people say, what does helping seniors do? Well, we're a small organization. What we do is we call it senior navigation. We get the calls from the seniors. We get the calls from the adult children saying, hey, I was down visiting mom and dad. I'm not sure if they've got all this the way they used to, and we need to do something. We don't know who to call. And then sometimes we get calls from concerned neighbors. But the reality of it is, you know, a lot of times we're running up on this the first time. So we say, don't try this on your own. The second corollary, though, we've added to this, and I think this we want to talk a little bit about this on the second part of the show, is, and I don't know how zoo animals get into all this, you know, don't be wise like an <laughs> owl and, and get your ducks in a row. But the third one is don't be an ostrich. Don't stick your head in the sand. Because, because it seems to me, Ruth, aging problems don't get better with age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so I'm saying like, you know, even when you mentioned, you know, like a lot of people coming in the first time, they may be in their 70s, but at least they're coming in at that point before right. the crisis starts, right? Right, right. Th I, that's always a plus. Um, you, you know, it's so funny is probably an average age of my new client is around in their middle 60s. Yeah. You know, maybe they just retired or getting ready to retire. And honestly, we should start thinking about things a little sooner than that. And I don't want to go crazy and say, you know, youths of 18 years of age should have a will. No, not necessarily. But hey, even at eight, 
at the age of 18, you should at least have a durable power of attorney and healthcare surrogate. And the reason I say that is because when you turn 18, you are no longer under the guardianship, the natural guardianship of your parents. You are now an adult. So if you get into some accident or have something, you know, cause you to lose capacity, um, then you're going to be in a guardianship, even an 18-year-old. Um, but I always recommend uh, parents of these young people who their young person is going off to college, get that durable power of attorney and health care surrogate prepared in case you need to do things for them while they're away. You know, I'm smiling when you're saying that because Jennifer Barton, who uh, at, runs a company called Seniors helping seniors where they hire seniors to go and help seniors and she talks about when I go in and do an assessment with the family she goes you know of course one of my questions is I want to know where they are on their paperwork do they have the power of attorney what are the things that we need to be aware of and then usually the kids are sitting there kind of smugly nodding going like mom yeah where is that you need that and then she says I'll turn right back at them and say and where is your paperwork because isn't it true like you know you send your kid off to college and they're 18 And something happens, and legally, you can't even call the hospital and go, what's going on? Because of HIPAA laws and stuff like that, right? Yeah, that's correct. That is absolutely correct. So at a minimum, you know, durable power of attorney, health care surrogate, anyone over the age of 18 should have one of those to avoid uh, guardianship in case something were to happen to them, like that causes them to lose capacity. Um, Yeah, I mean, and I would love to start seeing clients come in younger. I I always get surprised when I have a consultation and I walk into the conference room and the people are like in their 30s. I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy, you know. Yeah. And but you know, if you're if you're um if you have children, yeah. you should definitely have a plan. You have you can be young and things happen. Yeah. We need to have plans for your kids. Um you know, it's it's not unusual for me to have to do guardianships for young children mm. when both parents have passed. Oh, it, my goodness. It happens. Yeah. And so I have to do a guardianship for these young children. Wow. And most of the time, there's no documents. I don't have anything that guides me on what the parents would have wanted. I have yeah. to just go with, you know, whoever brought, you know, came to my office and said, this is what we want to do i just have to take their word that this is you know what the parents would have wanted but you know you can in your will you can designate in your will who you want as your child's guardian your minor child and also you can do pre-need guardians uh documents so that if you lose capacity and can't care for your minor children you can appoint people to take care of them yeah, you know, I think that's the the key that we're after here is we were talking about, you know, in the in the in the beginning of this we were talking about You know, here's some ways not to do it. Now let's talk about some ways that you should be doing this. Uh, Like I said, don't be an ostrich. Don't stick your head in the sand because it's not going to get better with time. Um, You know, we've had uh, there's a there's a lady who's connected with uh, the Helping Seniors Organization. Her name is Lori Peary, and she's a Ramsey trusted long term care insurance specialist that's what she you know she's yes. she's put her whole like expertise into helping people navigate how to get long-term care insurance and we've talked about that she said you know people will call me up now that they have a medical problem now they want long-term oh. care insurance and like uh, we kind of that ship is sailed yeah you know? sorry yeah so i want to talk ask you for your expertise like if you sit down and you're talking with us and you say guys this is what i need you to think about this is what this is what you should be getting together now Right, and and I, no matter what the age group is, yeah. um, anyone over the age of 18, I don't care if you're 18, 28, 58, 78, uh-huh. whatever, you should have a durable power of attorney. Uh-huh. You should have a health care surrogate. And you may want to consider having a will, maybe a trust, depending on the situation that you have in your family and how you want to take care of your family after you're gone. But to take care of you in the event that you lose capacity, durable power of attorney, healthcare surrogate at a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. And isn't it true though, that a lot of times like the spouses think, well, they're going to work with me just because I'm so-and-so's husband or wife or whatever the case would be. 
but that's not you can't make those assumptions like if the count is in one person's name you're not or worse what if they're not spouses they've just been together forever uh, and they're just living together and it's and you know so now somebody's really sick and we got all these issues we got to hit absolutely so carrie you you hit on a very key point if you're married and your spouse has bank accounts in mm-hmm. their own name you're not going to have access to that right. without a durable power of attorney right um, just because you're married absolutely means nothing. Right. Um, there may, there are some exceptions when it comes to healthcare decisions, you might be able to be appointed the proxy uh-huh. healthcare proxy, uh, by the hospital to make, um, emergency medical decisions, but it's really best to be able to have that healthcare surrogate. That way you have the HIPAA release. You can talk to the doctors, right. you can get the medical records. You have a lot more, um, flexibility, with a healthcare surrogate, but, um, definitely with, oh gosh. And then people who are not married, it's even worse for them. Yeah. Cause the hospitals are going to like, you don't have any legal connection that we can establish. Right. Well, and here's the problem. A lot of times when you have long-term relationships like that, um, and say one of the members of that relationship has some kind of medical issue, um, the, other is not the spouse they don't Mm -hmm. they're low on the totem pole when it comes to who has priority for making medical decisions and honestly they should be taught because that's their partner yeah so how you do it when you're not married you get documents that give the authority you know i was also going to say this you know i think a lot of times there's another factor in this you know in you know, we used to laugh at the Brady Bunch because it was like the first blended family that we ever heard about, mm-hmm. right? But but now there's second marriages, there's third marriages. Some people could be on six or seven. I don't know. We met one of them on a cruise ship once. There was <laughs> that, we were laughing. It was so funny. This is about the Helping Seniors uh, Foundation cruise. There was a lady who was on board, and she'd been married seven times, and she was with a gentleman. And she said, and and so we were doing the math. Like, You're how old? And you've been married this time. So that means each person gets like maybe five and a half, six years. <laughs> so we're saying like, how long have you been here? Because you've got like a year and a half left. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> I don't want to get off the subject. But I was just thinking like, but with blended families and the kids, you know, something goes wrong and the paperwork isn't clear. Now everybody's rushing in. Well, I'm the one who says dad should do this. or And the new wife says, no, 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 no. And then the old wife says, oh, but wait, <laughs> you know. Right. And it's the kids too. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, it's very important to have clear paperwork, especially with blended families. You, if you remarry, you may inadvertently, if you don't plan correctly, disinherit your own children. Oh, wow. You know, wow. if you don't plan correctly, your assets may turn out to, to go to your new spouse or even down her bloodline yeah. if you don't plan correctly. I know. Uh, so it's important. It's important to think about these things. And a lot of people say uh, very cliche, like, you know, marriage is just a piece of paper. And I say, oh, no, it's wow. not. Wow. Marriage yeah. has a lot of legal um, consequences, uh, divorce as well. Yeah. And so if you have documents front that are old and now you've married and you haven't updated your documents, you better get them updated. Yeah. Um, if you are contemplating a divorce, I also recommend getting your documents up to date because you don't want an angry spouse wow. to be yeah. uh, in charge of you in the event that you lose capacity during the divorce process. We've seen it happen. Wow. Uh, so you can avoid those with having legal documents. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was thinking like, but here's another thing. Let's suppose that you thought you did really good. You know, we're talking about, you know, I got my paperwork all done in the nineties. I'm jam Ooh. up je- jelly tight. And, <laughs> and, and isn't the problem then, isn't the problem then that what if some of the people that you named either are no longer living or just d- wouldn't make sense where they are now, you know, they're not in the area or whatever's going on. You got to look at these things, even if you thought you did them right at one point, right? Absolutely. So, if anyone in your documents have lost capacity, mm-hmm. you get your documents looked at. If anyone in your plan has died, you need to get your documents looked at. Mm-hmm. If uh, you may not like those people anymore, right? Get your documents looked at. 
Um, also, the law changes, you know, uh, since 1990s, even 20, 2000s, the law changes con constantly. You know, the legislature yep. is always trying to, you know, do better, get more protective, right. you know, laws in place. And so we have been continually going through little changes. And so we should make, you know, they recommend experts recommend <laughs> uh, every three to five years to yeah. have your documents looked at. I don't know that it needs to be that frequent, but um, maybe five years would be fine. But especially if you lose someone, if someone dies, uh, if your spouse dies, definitely. If one of your um, beneficiaries die or someone you name to be in charge dies or loses capacity, or if you remarry, these are all big life changing events that should trigger you to say I should have my documents looked at yeah. to make sure they're still going to act the way I want them to act. Yeah, you know, it's a fascinating conversation because I think um what we were talking about during the mid-show break is that these aren't decisions, you know, we we will clip a coupon because we think we're going to save a dollar at the grocery store, you know, or, <laughs> yeah. or 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 something like that. We have all these ideas that we're going to save money and there's I'm not making fun of that. I think that's wise, but the problem is if we major on the minor and we walk right past something that's not dollars, not hundreds of dollars, but like we were talking about during the break, could be tens of thousands, if maybe not hundreds of thousands, if everybody starts squabbling about stuff and there's money to squabble over. And I guess if there's more money, more squabbles sometimes follow. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think they go hand in hand. <laughs> um, yeah, the bigger the, the the money pot, probably the more squabbling there will be if you don't have a clear plan set out. And um, I, I've seen plenty of fights mm -hmm. even with very little just because it's a fight over power. Yeah. But a, a very clear written plan yeah. helps keep the litigation at bay. So, Ruth, you do – we're talking with Ruth Rhodes, board-certified elder law attorney with Rhodes Law. You do so – in fact, you were literally on your way here from one of your uh, training sessions that you uh, offer. They're absolutely free of charge there at one senior place, and you're going to be speaking actually coming up uh, at Joe's Senior Resource Center where you also have an office. And um, and then on top of that, you've got an article coming out in the October – it's not quite here yet – the October edition – of Senior Scene Magazine, where you're talking about particularly Medicare, or rather Medicaid planning, and, and, and what all's involved in that. That's a whole topic by itself. Mm. But if somebody wanted to get involved, find out a schedule of times and places, because those are free of charge, and what a great way to just stick your toe in the water. Nobody's going to twist your arm and make you sign some sort of a deal or whatever, but, but just to get yourself educated so you know the right question to ask seems really important. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I do offer um, those events at One Senior Place every, uh, what is today, the third Wednesday yep. of the month at 10 a.m. at uh -huh. One Senior Place. It's free. Uh, we're going to be doing the Knowledge College yes. coming up yes. in October. Yeah. That's free, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we also do free consultations, too. Okay. So if you can't make it to one of the events and you have questions, we're happy to sit down and consult with you and talk to you about um, your situation, and there's no cost for that either. And how do people reach your office? We're talking about Rhodes Law PA. So my office telephone number is 321-610-4542. That's 321-610-4542. And you can also find us on the web. We have a very uh, developed website with a lot mm -hmm. of information on it. And that website is www.roadslawpa.com. That's R-H-O-D as in David, E-S as in Sam, L-A-W-P as in Paul, A.com. Yeah. No, I really uh, want to encourage you, if you're listening to this, take heed to the things we're talking about. Like I said, our president, or well, I guess now he's president emeritus and founder, Joe Steckler, has always talked about how important it is to get your ducks in a row or get your aging plan together. I wanted to reserve a couple of minutes here at the end of the show because we are closing in on our huge fundraiser. This is like half of our uh, support that we need as a as a uh, as a nonprofit organization, we have no reason to exist, period, other than to serve you, 
in, and seniors in Brevard County, one in four of us is over 65 and one in two is over 50. And that means uh, they're going to send you a card from AARP, <laughs> whether it insults you or not, on your 50th birthday and call you a senior. So you might as well invest a little bit of time in this and invest a little bit of your money into the Helping Seniors Car Raffle because it really is an investment. You're helping us build a network to help seniors here in Brevard County. Joe Steckler, the guy who founded the Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation, they call them Joe's Clubs to this day, and now we're uh, really trying to help families that, that that go with issues that go, you know, Joe said many families have cognitive challenges in, within them, but almost every family is going to deal with some aging issues. And he said, that's why we need an organization that can help people navigate this. So when you help us, that's what you're helping us to do. What do you get in exchange for helping us? Well, number one, you could win a brand new car, which is not mm-hmm. a bad opportunity that might happen because Joe and AJ hires the car dealer have been friends for years and they're, Ruth, this year, it's called Choose Your Adventure because there's literally seven cars. So on Sunday, October 27th, whoever they pull that name out, you don't have to be present to win. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. When they pull your name out of that barrel and read that ticket number, and that's your ticket, you have a decision to make is which Mm -hmm. set of keys do you want to take? There's just like great cars in there. There is a – it's such a plethora. This year, there is everything from a Jeep Compass – to a Chevrolet Colorado pickup truck, to a um, little sporty thing called a Dodge Hornet, to a little bit more elegant thing called a Mazda 3 sedan. Um, There is also a um, Kia Sportage and a Mitsubishi Outlander. That was the car that our winner last year picked. Her name is Diane Pilak, and she said, out of all the choices, this is what I want. I want the stylish little um, Mitsubishi Outlander, and so that's what she's doing. But that's going to be your decision October 27th when you win. And the other fun part of it is you don't have to be present to win, but with your ticket, you can come on out to all the fun. We're going to make it daylight hours this time. So so there, I don't know if you were there last year. There was so many people. We said, let's make it daylight hours. So it's going to be a Sunday afternoon event. So it's easy to get to daylight hours coming in and also daylight hours when you're going out. And because it's daylight hours, because the museum was so packed last year, we're going to be able to do stuff inside and outside. So it's going to give everybody lots of room to move around. And in fact, we're making it, since it's a Sunday afternoon, making it family friendly. When you get your ticket, we invite you to bring your kids, well, probably your grandkids, right? Because <laughs> it's kids under 10. That, that if, you, if you have a ticket, bring a couple of them with you and let them have a lot of fun because Mark's collection keeps growing. Ruth, he's up to like 500. You've been to the museum. I've been there multiple times. I love that place. Wow. And you know what? It's not open to the public. No, that's right. Oh, no. This is special. So if I suggest, even if you don't end up winning, you still get to get into that amazing museum. So I buy enough tickets every year so that I can bring my family because we all love looking at his cars. And every time we go, it's he sets it up different. He adds more cars. It's, it's amazing. It that, is amazing. That's what I was going to say. You know, I remember the first year because he's been so kind and generous to us because every year he's been open. He's been open. Uh, this will be our eighth raffle, but he's been open seven out of the eight years. And so literally every year that we've had the raffle that he's been open, he's invited us back to do this. And what I remember the very first year we went in there, he had like 250 cars. And when we came back the next year, we started noticing the cars are getting closer and closer yeah. together because he keeps buying more now cars. Now he's piling them up. Now, now he's decker. got like double decker. <laughs> and I was asking Andrew Mackey, who's the, the the guy who who's in charge of all the events, and I said, "What's he going to do?" He said, "Well, now we're looking at triple stackers." <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my wow. goodness, because there's like they were. He was telling me it's getting close to 500 cars. So even if you were there last year, I guarantee you he's got stuff you didn't get to see last year. Oh, it's a different yeah. experience. Every time I go, it's a different experience. Yeah, it's an amazing experience, and I just love the cars. Yeah, put 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 Sunday, October 27th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. On your calendar, you can get all the details at HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com, HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com. You can call us at 321-473-7770. Get your tickets uh, that way by phone. You can also drop by Joe's Senior Resource Center. You can get them at any Boniface 
hires car dealership. We're going to make sure your office is set up so yep. people can get them at Rhodes Law, too. Real quick before we wind up the show, I just want to make sure one more time, board certified elder law attorney, Ruth Rhodes, Rhodes Law, PA, best number and best way to find out about upcoming seminars. Okay, so if the phone number again is 321 610 Four five four two, and you can call that number or go on our website at www.roadslawpa.com, and you can find out information about the seminars that we put on every single month. We put on a seminar for education at one senior place on the third Wednesday at 10 a.m., and then on the second Thursday of every month, we do a free movie. Oh, that sounds like fun. Well, you got to go to RhodesLawPA.com and check all that out. Well, that's the time we have. We'll see you next week, lunchtime Wednesdays, for Helping Seniors Radio.